Welcome to Our Girl Relationships. We talk about the problems people face in their day-to-day -day lives. Let's start with the video. I've been married to my husband for over 20 years now. I think we're running into our 23rd or 24th year of marriage and it hasn't always been a smooth ride. And there were times when I was so hurt and mad that I wanted to leave it all behind and just run away. But we both stick it out in our own way and here we are, still married, still unhappy, but somehow refusing to get a divorce. We have two children, both are 18 plus and have gone out to pursue their dreams in different fields. I spent most of my life living for my children and they are the main reason that I didn't divorce my husband all those years ago. Actually, I've caught my husband being unfaithful to me more than once. One time was before we got married. I didn't know it then, but later, during our high school reunion, I saw the secrets passing between my husband and this girl I shared a few classes with. It was hard to ignore what all that meant, and when we came home, I asked him what exactly happened between them. Now, a normal high school fling shouldn't be a cause for concern, but the problem here was that my husband and I have dated each other all through high school, so him having something going on with another girl was him cheating on me. When I pressed him hard for the truth, he did confess to it, but that was a long time ago, and I couldn't let the past ruin our marriage. Our kids were also toddlers then, and my single decision of breaking it off could have influenced their whole life, so I stuck it out at that time. Then, about two years ago, I found out that my husband was having an affair with his work colleague. This time, he didn't confess anything, nor did I catch him red-handed in the act. But we were at a Christmas dinner in my husband's office, and I felt weird vibes from this woman who was trying to follow us everywhere we went. She was purposefully trying to compare herself with me, and it was clear what the eye contact between her and my husband meant. A woman's sixth sense is almost always right, and sure enough, when I tried to get the office gossip out of an unknown worker from his office, I found out that my husband spends too much time with that woman. We were already married for over 20 years, so I was too used to the familiarity of our lives and didn't want to deal with any unnecessary drama. We've been living as estranged people for far too long for me to be all pressed over something like that. I did, however, start taking some steps to secure my future in case something worse happened. I started documenting almost all the things my husband did with proof and even had cameras installed in our home. I even slowly stopped depositing a part of my salary in our joint account and kept separate funds for me and my children. The house was already in my name so I didn't have to worry about it and it wasn't a shared asset as it was a gift to me by my father. I was unconsciously preparing for a divorce, but I didn't think I'll actually go through with it ever. Now, a few weeks ago, my husband came to me with an unusual request. He asked me for help with a friend who's recently lost her apartment and needs a place to stay. He said that this work colleague of his has been a longtime friend and I've even met her a few times. I told him that if someone needed a place to crash, they could always use one of our kids' bedrooms or the sofa in the living room. We didn't have a guest room because we converted it into a home office for my husband, and the only spare room left was occupied by me as my personal library and DVD collection. I have a hobby of collecting books and vinyl albums and need a space to keep them safe. But my husband said that this work colleague of his needs a separate room so they can even work from home if they want and they don't know how long it'd take for them to find a new place so he'd like me to clear out my hobby room so he can accommodate her. I wasn't angry at first and was fully ready to have a reasonable conversation but when he said her I asked him who exactly is this friend of his. He proceeded to show me the photo of the same woman who I knew he was more or less having an affair with. That's when I lost all reasoning. Keeping it out of the house was one thing, 
As long as he didn't bring whatever he did outside in our lives, I was okay with it. But now he was asking me to make sacrifices so he could potentially keep his young mistress at home? He really had the nerve to ask me that. So I told him clearly that that person isn't welcome in my house and there's no room for negotiation. My sudden change in attitude must have surprised him because he couldn't figure out for a second what I meant by no room for discussion. But then he got furious and said that, how can I deny it when I know he rarely asks me to make any sacrifices and if he's asking, it must mean that it's very important to him. So I spat back that, of course. I knew how important it is to him since she's been satisfying all his needs in all the areas. He was shocked to hear that from me. He didn't realize that I knew about it. He asked me what I found out, to be honest. I did have my suspicions and I was hoping against all hope that what the office worker said about the gossip wasn't true. But my husband's reaction confirmed that he was actually having an affair. Until now, my kids were the reason I didn't walk out or divorce him. But now they're all grown up and don't even live at home. They're also mature enough to understand that not every relationship is made of roses only. So I finally let the hurt of all this time boil to the surface and kick my husband out of the house. Like I told him, there was no room for discussion or fighting and excuses. I went to our room, took a bag out and threw whatever stuff of his I could grab. I then threw the bag out along with him and told him that he could happily find another place to live and invite his work colleague to stay with him, as this house is no longer his. He tried to charge at me and tell me to stay within my limits and that I have no right to kick him out, but I told him to back off before I called 911. The cops were probably the only thing that could calm down his hot brain, and he left after saying that he's going to deal with me later. I put up with what he did for over 20 years, but now, suddenly, it's all too much for me to bear. And I've been thinking for a long time that I shouldn't have done it, now if I couldn't do this all those years ago. I mean, if I turned a blind eye to his nature before, then do I even have a right to complain now that he's cheating again? Does this make me an a-hole, or is he the a-hole here? My son called me today and asked me what happened. I haven't talked to my husband in a week and have all his contacts on the block list. I didn't want to deal with him at all and love the peace in my life a little too much to fight over something I know is already destroyed beyond repair. I didn't think my husband would involve our kids in this so soon, but I was wrong. I think he's more shameless than I thought. He had told Jake about how I had kicked him out of the house and now I'm refusing to pick his calls or let him back in. He did say it was because he asked me to let a friend stay at our house for a few days, but he hid the truth about his affair. As expected of that bastard, he knows how much I tried to shield my kids from the pain and suffering of bad news and maybe he's trying to use that as a weapon here. But he doesn't know that I can be very vindictive when I want to. So I told my son the truth about his dad and was glad to see that he took my side. He told me that I did the right thing and I don't have to worry about him or his sister. He even said that if dad tries to do anything to me, I should tell him immediately and he'll protect me. That almost made me cry. But I told him that I've already contacted my lawyer and he doesn't have to worry about my health. I'm more than capable enough of dealing with my bastard husband. I think it's kind of a blessing that my kids are all grown up and I waited for all these years before breaking. Now, I don't have to deal with the custody battle and the divorce process has been made a hell of a lot easier. That isn't to say that I'm not having any problems at all. My husband is trying to fight tooth and nail for whatever assets we have as mutual property, while I'm trying to prove that he cheated on me and sabotaged the marriage. I actually don't have proof, and any rumor from the office is just hearsay. Thankfully, the house I was living in is considered my property, and there's no dispute over it. I do have a job, 
but I earn less than my husband, so I'm also trying to get alimony out of him, which I do deserve for turning a blind eye to his shenanigans all these years. That's why we're still fighting and nothing is getting finalized. Although the final ruling should be announced sometime next month if I were to trust my lawyer's judgment, I'm finally divorced. At the age of 49, I'm a divorced woman and my daughter also found out about it. I actually called her to give her the sad news, but she told me that she already knows everything. This time, it was my son who blew the whistle. I was actually moved that my daughter knew about everything and kept it all to herself instead of calling and bombarding me with questions. Not surprised, though, because she's always been the more mature one among my two kids. I don't feel sad or angry anymore. I mean, a relationship, 20 plus years of marriage, was lost. But we've been living as just acquaintances for a long time for me to feel a sense of grief over this. I'm actually all ready to work and just get out there and have fun with my life. NTA, you're not the a-hole here, but you're definitely a spineless person if you put up with this marriage for over 20 years. NTA, just because it took you a long time to realize you don't want to be in this relationship doesn't mean that you should keep putting up with it anymore. Your husband is definitely an a-hole and you did the right thing by kicking him out of your life. Let me start off by saying that I am 17, I'm a senior in high school and have a job. My sister had twins last year. We were all excited for her and her husband. When the babies were born, they asked if I could stay with them for a few weeks to help them settle in. I had no problem doing this as I was excited to spend time with the babies and it gave a chance to my sister and her husband to get used to having kids. I figured being married for years and all of a sudden two babies come is a big change. They had been married for nine years without kids. Those few weeks ended up turning into approximately three months. Again, I didn't mind because I bonded a lot with my nephew and niece. When they turned six months, my sister had to go back to work, so she asked if I could help her babysit them. I wasn't doing anything important at the time, so I said yes. I was babysitting Monday to Friday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. I kept to this schedule for about one year, four months, and never really complained about being there 24-7. This is where me being a senior and having a job comes in. Where I work, I don't have a set schedule, so it's inconsistent with the hours, and I go to school for only a few hours a day. My school is really flexible. I also fell behind last year in two of my classes because of me having to babysit. A few weeks ago, I sat down with my sister and told her that I couldn't babysit like I was able to before. She got upset with me because she said she really needed me to babysit because nannies and daycare were way too expensive for them. We came to an agreement that I would only go three days a week instead of five. Fast forward to three days ago, I told my sister that I could only go twice a week instead of three. This led to a heated discussion between us. She said some rude things to me about being inconsiderate, selfish, and other things along those lines. What she said made me feel bad. My mom and a few of my siblings kept telling me to stand my ground. The other half of my siblings sided with my sister and are telling me to just help her out for as long as she needs. I'm genuinely conflicted and confused about what I should do because I feel bad, but I'm also tired of babysitting and just want to be able to enjoy my senior year. AITA for this? I just woke up. I didn't expect for this post to get any attention. I am, however, greatly appreciative of all of your comments. After reading quite a lot of comments, I have decided that I will not be babysitting at all for her. I showed my parents this post and they agreed with the comments. They will be talking to my sister and letting her know that I'm done babysitting. I go to a charter school. I have one in-person class twice a week, and the rest of my classes are independent classes, like textbook classes. And my parents have been wanting to get involved, but I thought I had the situation under control. 
I do want to put it out there for those saying, why didn't they plan better for having kids? As much as I love my nephew and niece, they were accidents. And my sister and her husband never planned on having kids. They had their whole life planned without kids. Also, for those asking why my other siblings don't babysit, well, I'm the youngest of eight. They are all over 23 years and have either a full-time job or are out of state for university. So with me being the youngest and living closest to my sister, some automatically put me up for the babysitter job. NTA, you need to cut ties. They've been using you and emotionally manipulating you for free babysitting services. They are the parents, not you. You are not responsible for their choices. They should have considered before having kids. If they can't afford babysitting services, then they can't afford to have kids. You should not throw away your life over their selfish decisions. NTA, listen to your mother. You didn't have kids. You are trying to finish high school and get a better job and maybe get more education. You are not your sister's servant or unpaid nanny. Value yourself more than this. Look up what full-time nannies make and see how much you've been used. Don't go any day of the week until she acknowledges that she's been using you and pays you for your time if there is an emergency or daycare is closed, or something. At your age, you need to be building your own future, not enabling your sister. My boyfriend has always been a bit chubby, but gained a lot of pandemic weight too. I don't know how much he weighs, but he wears an XXL at 5 foot 10. Since his weight gain, he has been nagging me about my eating habits. I eat much healthier than him, but he doesn't seem to realize it because we don't live together. I normally eat healthily, but when we go out, I want a steak. He gets annoyed and tells me since he's ordering a salad, I need to order one too. He likes to just order whatever I'm ordering, but then gets mad if it's not what he wants to eat. He eats really unhealthy, but eats healthy when we are together and preaches healthy eating, but it's only junk in his fridge and place. Whereas I eat healthy at home and only go out one to two times a month to eat out, so you best believe I'm enjoying it. Recently, we took a long road trip for two weeks, and it was a nightmare. Like, I'll have some chocolate on a long road trip, and he gets mad, saying I can't eat that in front of him. I'm pretty small, five foot six, 130 pounds. So he constantly tells me I'm lucky and blessed with good genes and can eat whatever I want and he's genetically cursed so he can't lose weight. I point out he had a four hot dogs, three sodas and a bucket, yes, a bucket of cookies at the state fair. And he would get mad and say he's done talking about it and mope. Then he tries to catch me eating something he thinks I shouldn't eat, like chips, basically saying, aha, you eat junk food too, therefore you should be fat. It's so annoying and I finally lost my temper and told him it's not my fault he's fat. He just can't control his mouth. He started screaming at me. I don't know what it's like and I'm just lucky I can eat what I want and I'm ruining his weight loss by eating junk in front of him. We got home and I ignored all his calls because I'm honestly sick of him. But AITA for having lost my temper and said what I think is the truth? Honestly, NTA. I think the pandemic weight gain has been hard for people to accept because it's associated with something that was out of their control. He shouldn't be having a go at you or trying to control what you eat. He needs to get his shit together and either accept his eating habits or change his routine. Either way, he isn't being fair to you, and I'm not surprised you snapped. NTA, and he shouldn't be controlling what you eat. This feels quite controlling in the context you gave. It sounds like he might be looking for someone to blame, and it is you. I think if you want to continue the relationship, be very clear that you are not concerned about your weight. What you eat is your decision, and while you are supportive... The comments and attempts to control you must cease. B 
Be clear. It's getting to the point where you are considering ending the relationship. I have once been very fat and I did ask my family to try not to tempt me if they could, but I actually was trying to lose weight and succeeded. They mostly tried not to tempt me, but I also realized I couldn't control their diet. Weight is a complicated thing and it can be impacted by medications, genes, thyroid, etc. The big reason I lost weight was stopping my medications. But it can also be impacted by a lack of self-control. 